Good morning. I'm Major General Larry Stutzring, U.S. Air Force retired, Director of Research here at the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies, and welcome to our Strategic Deterrence and Missile Defense Forum series. We're delighted to have with us today Colonel Moshe Patel, Israeli Air Force retired. He is currently the Director and General Manager of the Israeli Missile Defense Organization, or otherwise known as IMDO, which is part of the Israeli Ministry of Defense Directorate for Research and Development. Before retiring from the Israeli Air Force, Colonel Patel served in many leadership positions within the Israeli Missile Defense Organization. He helped develop and deploy the Aero Weapon System. Following his military retirement, he joined Elbit Systems where his responsibilities included development of the command and control element of the Aero weapon system, David's sling weapon system, and the Israel test bed and artillery tactical and intelligence systems, as well as all other parts and pieces. He also managed the IR missile warning solution division. In May of 2016, he was appointed to his current position as director and general manager of the Israeli missile defense organization. Well, Colonel Patel, uh, thank you for taking time to join us today. It's such a pleasure to host someone as accomplished as yourself to speak more to the missile defense component of deterrence. It provides us a view outside the established U.S. Department of Defense mindset. Uh, although we all have, uh, both of our countries are focused largely on the same goals. With that in mind, Colonel, I'd like to kick things off by giving you an opportunity to go over the missions and priorities of the Israeli Missile Defense Organization. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, General, uh, for your kind introduction. And uh, it's a great honor for me to be here at the Mitchell Institute of Aerospace uh, Studies as a guest. Uh, before I start, I would like to recognize my colleagues and partners from the Missile Defense Agency. Uh, without them, for, with cooperation of more than 30 years, we were not uh, at this stage that we are now uh, here in Israel. Uh, so let me start uh, with giving some of uh, our uh, introduction and background. Be very pleased to the next slide. Uh, so uh, our neighborhood, as you all know, it is not uh, Mexico in the south and Canada in the north. Uh, the neighborhood is very, very tough. We are suffering uh, for uh, many, many years uh, with uh, any kind of uh, uh, rockets, missiles that can attack Israel. Uh, recently, we uh, have the opportunity to see that our enemies are putting a lot of efforts in maneuverable capability, uh, low altitude, putting weapons of mass destruction, uh, uh, actually uh, adjusting the accuracy of the weapons and improving uh, the uh, threats uh, that can threat Israel. Uh, and of course, we, we're still talking about huge amounts of, 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 of arsenal that can threaten Israel. And they're using uh, human shields. They're launching uh, the, 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 the rockets of hospitals from schools, which make it much more difficult. Next slide, please. For that, uh, together with the Missile Defense Agency, we establish our multi-tier defense capability. Uh, we started in the past, back in the 80s, with the Aero Weapon System, uh, and then we went up to Aero 3 and went down to Aerodome and to uh, David's Lee. So at the lower tier, for medium and short range rockets and UAVs, we have the Iron Dome. Above the, that, we have the David Sling Weapon System, which is good for cruise missiles, for rockets, for uh, uh, accurate uh, weapons, uh, for medium to long range. Above that, we have the Aero 2, and above the Aero 2, we have the Aero 3, and this gives us a kind of uh, multi tier capability. This is what we call in Israel active defense. Of course, we're, we have, we're having uh, early warning capability, and we have uh, passive defense that uh, how our on-point command can help the population to protect themselves with shelters and uh, all what is needed. Next slide, please. Uh, when we start our, uh, uh, our 
efforts in the past, we start with, from batteries. Uh, the aero open system started as a one battery, then we expanded it to two, to three. Uh, but we came to into conclusion that it's better to uh, work with arrays. So we have usually one central command and control with a backup capability, of course, that uh, receive information for many kinds of sensors, either uh, uh, RF or electro-optic. And uh, of course, using uh, the best interceptor that can do the mission. And what I can say is that in all of our multi-tier capability or array of systems, uh, uh, interoperable between themselves, and of course have a very good interoperability connecting to US systems that can be deployed into our, our region. Next slide, please. Let me go over uh, one by one uh, of our weapon system. So let me start with uh, the lower, lower tier that system that we have. This is our Iron Dome. It was developed in a very rapid uh, recent development capability uh, for declaring uh, FSD at the end of uh, 2007. In March 2011, three and a half years, we have the first IOC. It is, it's a combat proven, more than 2,000 uh, successful uh, operational interception until now. A very high success ratio, uh, low costs, uh, high efficiency. As my colleagues in the MDA are saying, don't say cheap, say affordable. So very, very affordable system. Capability to handle salvos, uh, have mobile capability, robust capability. We have selectivity. We can uh, actually intercept threats that are threatening parts that we would like to, de to defense. Next, please. So uh, our 2020 status is that until now, actually we developed the system and upgrade the system uh, along the years uh, only by software. Uh, we are now in the, in the position to, uh, to re-evaluate and to assess our capability and maybe uh, to do in the future some hardware changes. But until now, we extend our capability only with improving our uh, algorithm capability. We have a multi-year flight test plan uh, that in each of uh, the flight tests, we are extending the capabilities and stretching the envelope of the system. What I can say is that uh, we have now a full co-production capability with the uh, US uh, uh, companies according to what we agreed in our memorandum of understanding. So uh, uh, I can say that 70% of the components of Iron Dome uh, interceptors are being produced to the United States. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, all the data and whatever need, needed to be uh, transferred to the US companies in order to produce the Iron Dome have been uh, done in the past. We are very, very happy uh, that uh, the US Army decided to purchase two Iron Dome batteries. And by the end of this month, we are going to the deliver, I'm glad to announce that we are going to deliver the first battery for the US Army and uh, the second battery, according to the plan, according to the agreements, according to the contract, will be delivered by the end of this year. The US Army will have the capability uh, to train uh, with those batteries, and whenever they will be uh, ready to deploy them, they will deploy them. Next slide, please. What I, I would like to mention that uh, we have uh, also uh, Iron Dome capability uh, by sea. Uh, uh, now, in, on our SAR-5 uh, vessels, we have uh, the Iron Dome capability. And I'm sure that you heard, uh, you are hearing uh, during the news uh, that Iron Dome is our main defender according to the threats that we, we are suffering. Let me move uh, to the David Sling Weapon System. Uh, David Sling Weapon System, from day one, it's a code developed program that being developed between Rafael and Raytheon and Raytheon subcontractors. It's uh, our lower tier defense to intercept short, short and medium range uh, uh, threats, long range threats, rocket and cruise missiles. Uh, it has high intercept probability. From day one, David's link uh, was uh, developed 
as a kind of uh, central array of, uh, of, uh, of system. So we have central command control that uh, receive information from all the detection system and of course launching the right interceptor. We have capability to handle salvos. Uh, the defense is, we, the, the foot into, footprint of the defense is very, very large. Uh, and the, actually the David Sling uh, weapon system help us uh, to cover uh, most of the places to defend Israel from short up, up to medium range of threats. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the 2020 status of the David Sling is that we are continuing to, uh, de to develop the system according to the emerging threats uh, with significant capability expansion. Um, we are continuing to conduct uh, flight tests according to the plan. We are con continue to do uh, the co-production. Uh, we entered to the serial production and it's working uh, very, very smoothly uh, because as I mentioned, the develop was done from day one uh, uh, by the two companies, Rafael and Raytheon. Next slide, please. Uh, we are now going to the Aero. Aero 2 uh, system is the most veteran system in our array. It, it has the capability to do endo and exo atmospheric uh, interception. It has a very large defense footprint. As I mentioned, we started in a batteries uh, uh, architecture, and now we are talking about array, like the David Sling. We have central command and control, and uh, we, uh, to the central command and control, all the detection systems are being connected. U.S. system is be, are being connected through uh, Link 16 and interoperability communication. Uh, and um, and uh, actually we can, I mean, the system can decide to launch Aero 2 or Aero 3. We have one command and control handling both interceptor, interceptors. Uh, I'm very glad, uh, I'm sure that you, most of you heard on the news that just recently we conducted a very successful flight test with Aero 2. We are very proud of uh, this uh, flight test uh, with, the, with some reasons. Some of them are because we are talking about 20 years um, old system that uh, actually uh, improved itself with four or five uh, upgraded blocks uh, that can counter emerging threats. Uh, I can say that during the, the, the last flight test, all of our uh, system participated uh, in a shadow mode and uh, worked uh, in, with full inter interoperability capability with, uh, between all the systems. Next slide, please. Uh, Aero 3 is our exo-atmospheric interceptor, interceptor. It has a very unique divert capability. Uh, we developed this system in order to minimize the leakage rate especially when talking about weapon of mass destruction uh, warheads. Uh, it has also very large uh, defense footprint. Uh, as I mentioned, the Aero 3 is part of our Aero uh, weapon array uh, and uh, was adapted to the original Aero 2 weapon system. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, our, uh, our achievement uh, last achievement with Aero 3 was conducted last year in the flight test in Alaska. It was a major effort uh, and uh, together, that was conducted together with the Missile Defense Agency and of course with the support of US Congress and US uh, DOD, US government in order to conduct the flight test in Alaska. Uh, we had the opportunity to be connected to uh, the, the, the ANTPY2 so we didn't bring any radar, so uh, our radar, so uh, actually we demonstrate interoperability capability with full engage or remote uh, data coming from uh, the ANTPY, um, three successful interception uh, with, against long range threat that represent uh, the threat that we are facing. I'm very glad to say that uh, we are uh, 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 start to receive our serial production uh, interceptors uh, after we finish uh, all the L-rate, low-rate initial production uh, 
uh, uh, quantities and uh, the Air 3 is uh, fully operational uh, within the Israeli Air Force. Next slide, please. Uh, yes, this is to mention uh, the campaign. Um, I can tell you that, uh, again, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, I, I mentioned uh, this flight test. Uh, the, the, this actually a series of flight testing that were, were conducted in Alaska. Uh, and uh, I can say that it was, of course, uh, a logistical uh, challenge. And I'm very, very glad that we finished everything before the COVID-19 hit all of us. Uh, and uh, we succeeded to finish uh, this effort. Next slide, please. Uh, when Israel joined, uh, when Israel actually uh, was one of the first nations to join President Reagan initiative of the Star War, uh, two efforts have been initiated. One was the Aero, it was orig originally the Aero 1 that was developed into the Aero 2. The second one was our test bed. It's the, a better lab that helped us to build the concept of operation, to build the architecture that is needed. It helped our forces to train together before going into exercises that being uh, uh, with the real systems. Uh, it's, it has been used since uh, 92 for many, many exercises uh, with a full coordinated plan with, uh, of course, MDA and UCOM. And uh, I can tell you that before each major exercise, we are uh, preparing ourselves in this uh, tool. We have a location here in Israel and another location in Huntsville, Alabama. Both labs can work uh, uh, together, share information, and we can conduct exercises either in Huntsville, Alabama or in Israel or together. Next slide, please. Uh, I mentioned the interoperability. Uh, I can tell you that from day one, we had the requirement uh, from US Congress and of course uh, the Missile Defense Agency to have interoperability capability in, within our system. The Aero 2, uh, the first uh, operational block of Aero 2 has this in, in interoperability capability. And of course it was demonstrated with a, a, long, uh, a, a, long, a lot of exercises. And uh, of course the joint flight test that was conducted in Alaska last year, demonstrated the most sophisticated capability that we can have within the interoperability efforts, which uh, fully engage on remote. And we are very, very proud to have this capability. So uh, having said that, I think it's, it's the best to see the movie. So if, Gary, if you can hit the video. For more than four decades, Israel has lived with the threat of ballistic threat attacks. Israel's enemies recognize ballistic rockets and missiles as an effective weapon to attack and terrorize the Israeli population. Over the years, this threat has become more lethal, with longer ranges, vastly increasing quantities, diversification, and precision. From Gaza and from Sinai, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and ISIS have continuously attacked communities in southern Israel with rockets and mortars. These attacks reach central Israel, including Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. In the recent combat rounds, including in last May, heavy warhead rockets were used against Israeli civilians, causing increasing casualties from every non-intercepted threat. In Lebanon, Hezbollah, supported by Iran, is the world's most heavily armed non-state actor deploying against Israel over 100,000 rockets and mortars, along with SRBMs, many attack UAVs, and a significant number 
of cruise missiles. In January 2019, Israel's first combat interception of a guided CRBM occurred when an Iranian missile aimed at the Hermon mountain was intercepted by an Iron Dome battery. Iran possesses long-range missiles and a major development program aimed to attack Israel. Along the years, the ballistic threat has become more accurate, more lethal, with fast-growing quantities covering all of Israel. Counter this complex threat, both offensive capabilities and a multi-tier defense architecture were defined and developed over the years. The combined defense array is operated by the Israeli Air Force and is fully deployed over all of Israel in order to provide operational flexibility and immediate response when required. Iron Dome Iron Dome is the first system of its kind. It was developed to counter attacks of short-range rockets. Operational within the Israeli Air Force since 2011, the system has demonstrated unprecedented and improving capabilities against Hamas attacks in the south and Iranian attacks in the north. Additional recognition of the Iron Dome's outstanding capabilities occurred this year when the U.S. Army decided to purchase two Iron Dome batteries. The Iron Dome system proved again and again its outstanding efficiency at knocking out rockets fired at population centers. During 2019, Iron Dome batteries once again successfully intercepted hundreds of threats all over Israel. Iron Dome's system capabilities are being enhanced constantly, including the naval Iron Dome application on the SAR-6 multi-mission corvettes, which will defend Israeli assets at sea. David Sling The David Sling weapon system is operational and provides the defense against large caliber rockets and short-range missiles. It will also possess unique cruise missile interception capabilities. System flight test number 6, conducted recently, successfully demonstrated the latest improvements against ballistic and cruise missile attacks. Aero Weapon System the Aero Weapon System has been in operational use since the year 2000. The Aero 2 interceptors proved interception capabilities in numerous tests conducted in Israel and in the United States, as well as in operational use. The Aero 3 exoatmospheric interceptor was developed in response to the threat posed by advanced, long-range ballistic missiles capable of carrying non-conventional warheads. Aero batteries are on continuous operational alert, including Aero 3 interceptors, after full integration into the Aero weapon system. Aero 3 demonstrated outstanding capabilities to hit and destroy long range ballistic missiles high above the atmosphere in an unprecedented three hit to kill exo-atmospheric interceptions within 10 days.
Arrow is clear to fire. Arrow copy. Five, four, Arba. three, Shalosh. two, Stein. one. Echad. Arrow away. Get back you. Get back Arrow you. Away. אחרי שלוש ירק בהצלחה מלאה טילים בליסטיים מחוץ לאטמוספירה בקבעים ובמהירויות שלא הכרנו עד כה הביצוע היה מושלם כל פגיעה בול היום יש לישראל את היכולת לפעול נגד טילים בליסטיים שישוגרו נגדנו מאיראן או מכל מקום אחר זהו הישג אדיר לביטחון ישראל וידעו כל אויבינו גם בהגנה Iron Dome, David Sling, and Aero Weapon System components are co-produced in Israel and in the United States under high technological and production quality standards. Israel and the U.S. ballistic missile defense systems are interoperable and are being exercised on a routine basis in simulators and in the field. including a recent deployment of the U.S. operational THAAD battery to Israel. The ITB, the Israeli test bed at Elbit, is an efficient battle simulator for missile defense practice. Many interoperability capabilities are practiced by joint teams at this facility. The U.S. TPY-2 radar successfully participated in the Alaska flight test demonstrating a high-end interoperability capability. The multi-tier ballistic defense system built and established by Israel and our U.S. ally safeguards the state of Israel against a constantly growing threat of rockets, ballistic missiles, and cruise missiles. So, uh, thank you. Just to summarize uh, my presentation before the question is, of course, we are committed to preserve our, our quality of advantage, uh, missile defense capability against our enemies. And again, I mentioned it at the beginning, with our, without the huge partnership that we have with US uh, uh, DOD, with US Missile Defense Agency, with US Congress, uh, we wouldn't be where we are And we are very, very thankful for that. And I, I would like to mention something which is very, very important. Uh, the, the, the cooperation is just, it, it is not just sending the budget or the money. It is managing together the programs. And this is how uh, it make, makes them much more, uh, in much more quality. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Colonel Patel. Uh, tremendous presentation and uh, a tremendous uh, image of why Israel's had to go in this direction. Uh, those of us who have walked the terrain know that those 100,000 missiles and rockets are something that uh, you live with every day. Uh, so I want to, you know, acknowledge that it's clear that Israel's led the world uh, in the deployment of some of the most sophisticated air defenses. Uh, and uh, until this presentation, many uh, listening may have only been familiar with the Iron Dome, but uh, Living under that threat certainly is a motivator, but you've got an impressive background in developing these systems. Why has Israel been so effective in its approach that it's been able to pioneer this technology? And second, second, uh, secondly to that, it seems to me that your success in this technology has drawn a lot of attention such that uh, you've lifted this strategic importance of missile defense systems across the globe. Uh, how do you see that? First of all, you need to understand, for us, the uh, missile defense threat is uh, existence threat, strategic threat, and this is how the Israel government see it from the uh, beginning. Um, I can tell you that most of our engineers are, uh, are, uh, res are doing reserves in their units and bring, you know, the, their military background uh, to the table. Um, since we, we are conducting a lot of flight tests and since our systems are having a lot of uh, operational experience, uh, we are gathering the lesson learned from all th those activities and implement them in the system. And one more thing that I would like to, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
the Israelis are known as a startup country uh, that we are doing shortcuts and uh, finding so very quick solution, solutions. But you know, the mix between those capabilities that in some of the place, places can be disadvantages, but to, 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 to fuse them together with the procedures uh, and uh, what we gain from, uh, from the US, together you receive the best solution ever. Very good. Well, uh, you mentioned uh, it's not just about the funds and the money, but uh, uh, I'd like to refer to the 2016 agreement signed by Israel and the United States uh, on military aid and the fiscal year 2020 budget for the second year in a row uh, provided $500 million to Israel's missile defense systems as per the agreement. Uh, and that was, of course, on top of the budget's foreign military financing level. First, in terms of the relationship between our two countries. What's the importance of this funding? And can you give us some insight into how that funding would be used in programs or priorities? Uh, first of all, we are almost uh, after 33 years of supporting our missile defense capability in Israel. And we are very, very proud uh, of this kind of cooperation. Uh, and the, the memorandum of understanding uh, that gives us a firm, a budget of 500 million, million per year, can help us uh, to plan uh, in uh, long terms. Uh, before that, uh, most of the budget came from uh, DOD budget, and then we went to Congress and asked for more plus ups. Uh, and now that we have uh, uh, something which is firm and uh, fixed for the next 10 years, it helps us a lot to plan, it helps us with our uh, capability with the industries uh, to do long-term contracts, uh, which is very, very helpful. Um, together with the Missile Defense Agency, actually we, um, we are planning all the time uh, five years in advance. And I can tell you that even we plan more, for more than five years in a, we plan the next 10 years, but uh, for the, uh, for the uh, first five years, we are planning it in more detail. And of course, from year to year, we get into more and more details. Uh, what we are planning to do for the next 10 years is first of all, to upgrade our capabilities, our systems, according to the emerging threats, to do software upgrades, hardware upgrades, to include, include uh, some more sophisticated capabilities. And in the second hand, to continue our efforts uh, for uh, co-production, uh, because, as you know and understand, our enemies are accumulating a lot of weapons and we need to be ready with the, the quantities that are needed. Mm. Very good. Uh, could you speak, uh, you talked a bit about it and the video had some content, but could you speak to the success of the, that joint test of the upgraded Arrow 2 over the Mediterranean Sea last month, I think it was? What is the significance of its successful employment in that testing environment? First of all, uh, as you all know, we were under the COVID-19 uh, constraints. It was yes. very, very difficult right. uh, to plan and conduct. Uh, what I can tell you that we use whatever is needed in order to have full coordination with the Missile Defense Agency with our secured lines in order to be fully coordinated and even uh, in real time activity. Uh, the most significant thi thing is to, to the, a, a weapon system that was, you know, uh, uh, operational 20 years ago and without any hardware, hardware change uh, with so many uh, software and algorithm upgrades can uh, intercept a long range threat that is coming uh, with uh, uh, high velocity, uh, something that uh, we, 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 we are supposed to face in the future, that this old system can do the work. And this was very, very important. More than that, uh, I can tell you that a lot, most of our uh, array uh, participated in the shadow mode with the fully uh, interoperability capability. Um, and uh, we get a lot uh, to test new capabilities in our uh, other systems. And 
of course, from that, you gain a lot from your uh, new development. So I can say that uh, after this flight test, uh, we, we assured the Israeli Air Force that even after 20 years, the Aero 2 uh, weapon system is very capable, very robust, and can do the work. Uh, do you uh, see future collaborations uh, are continuing with U.S. Uh, Missile Defense Agency, uh, different things, uh, same things, uh, but will it continue? Uh, first of all, of course, uh, we, uh, we, as we speak, we are uh, having uh, uh, continuous dialogue with the Miss Missile Defense Agency with regards to new technologies, new capabilities. Of course, I cannot, uh, you know, uh, put it in details right now, but uh, we have in mind uh, new technologies in, in uh, many areas that either can be implemented uh, in uh, our system or, or, or can be co-developed and can be used for our both nations. Uh, Colonel, if you were to summarize two or three things that, what's the, you know, the special sauce that you use to make these interceptors so effective. Uh, you've been a part of those programs for a long time. You grew them. Uh, we, we certainly recognize your contribution there. What made these things so successful? The capability to, uh, to have lesson learned uh, after flight test, after operational uh, uh, happening, after uh, either successful interception or uh, unsuccessful interception, the capability to understand quickly what happened, to uh, make the change, make uh, the, uh, uh, whatever is needed, and actually improve yourself in your next mission. Even, I can tell you, that from each of our more than 2,000 successful interceptions of the Iron Dome, from each interception, we learn a lot even if the, the, it, it was successful, we learned a lot and we didn't leave it aside to, and, uh, to improve, you know, uh, our capabilities. I think that this is the most important thing. And again, I mentioned it, that the, the fusing of the cultures can do miracles, miracles. Oh, that's that's a pretty inspiring. Thank you for that. Uh, the first battery, uh, as you mentioned, of uh, the Iron Dome, defense system ships to the Army this fall. Uh, the U.S. Marine Corps has already conducted a live fire demonstration where its own systems were integrated uh, with the Iron Dome systems, or as the Marines call it, the Sky Hunter systems. What is the potential of extending Israel missile defense capabilities to other countries uh, for their own defense? It's a, it's, a, it's a very good question. I can tell you that uh, we, uh, we are being approached by, uh, yeah, by a lot of governments, a lot of nations that uh, you know, uh, can see the threat and this, uh, can see the capabilities. We, first of all, the US, uh, US government has put priority uh, to receive all the technologies from us. This is the, our top priority. With other countries, uh, we need to, in most of the cases, we need to have full approval from the, Israel, from the Israeli government and, of course, from the U.S. government. You know that our, our system, our, is, we call them strategic system. They defend, uh, they, they defend children and, and the women and old people and any people in Israel. So we, we will be very careful whenever we are... Uh, exporting uh, those capabilities. And uh, every test is being, is being examined by both countries. In the, when we are talking about, uh, com uh, about the programs that we were developed together, it needs to be approved by both, both countries. And ev everything is being uh, investigated thoroughly before uh, uh, having uh, the yes answer. Yeah. Well, the, the global threat environment is rapidly changing and uh, there's large numbers of offensive cruise missiles. Uh, they're as much a threat to the U.S. forces as they are to Israel's forces. Uh, how well do your systems uh, work against those threats uh, and also unmanned systems? What I can tell you that uh, from day one, the David Sling weapon system was designed 
to be uh, effective against uh, the cruise missile. And we demonstrate oh. this capability, and we are going to upgrade the capability more and more together with the Missile Defense Agency. Um, with regards to with UAV, uh, of course, even the Iron Dome is, uh, could be very, very effective against uh, using UAV. Uh, and of course, the David thing has also capability against UAVs. So we, uh, we look at those threats. Uh, we looked at those threats, uh, I can tell you, 10 years ago. And of course, we need to upgrade and have much more uh, uh, algorithms and more capabilities in the future in, in, in those systems. And then when, I, when I'm talking about uh, better capabilities, it's better detection and the better uh, interception capability, and of course, uh, uh, very good command and control that is, is needed in order to uh, have a full picture of what is going on. Well, let me uh, swing the discussion a bit to uh, a bigger context. Uh, of course, you've watched the threat, you live there with the threat. Uh, what is Iran, in your opinion, trying to achieve with its missile arsenal uh, it seems obvious, but it continues to test, upgrade, and expand. How do you regard that threat in the context of your uh, missile defense programs? I can tell you that Iran is our main concern at this uh, point. Uh, it is not just threats that are coming from Iran towards Israel. Those are all threats that Iran is sending to, our, to her proxies and to our enemies, either uh, uh, to Iraq, from Iraq, from Lebanon with the Hezbollah, of course, from Syria. The Iranians are, are now uh, stationed in Syria as well, and to the Hamas. So all of our enemies actually benefit from Iran, Iran technologies. Uh, we are sure that the Iranians are putting a lot of effort to have a weapon of mass destruction capability. They are investing uh, a lot with regards to have uh, the rockets and the missiles to be more accurate, uh, even when talking about short range uh, rockets or long range rockets. Uh, so we moved from, from uh, a planning, not only for, from statistical kind of uh, weapon, we moved uh, to take to, to think and to have solutions against accurate weapons and maneuvering targets. Interesting. Well, uh, let me press on that a little bit more. Uh, you have a historic agreement, peace agreement reached uh, between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. Uh, I think there have been many breakthroughs. Uh, it's an incredible time. And just days ago, I understand phone calls and direct flights were made between the two countries, uh, unheard of or unthought could ever happen. And there's some reporting there was secret collaboration between the two countries on COVID-19. Uh, however, there remains that one common threat lurking in plain view, and that's Iran. Uh, is it possible there would be collaboration in missile defense in any way, large or small, uh, with UAE or the greater uh, community of nations in your region? Let me start and uh, answer your question as an engineer. If you look at the map, as an engineer, you could think that, that of course, UAE could be a very good partner to help us against our threats. Just look from looking at the map. Uh, but now let's talk uh, more uh, realistic. Of course, uh, any kind of cooperation needs to be examined. Uh, all the, um, all the uh, uh, defense kind of uh, partnership uh, uh, need to be uh, examined and be de being decided. Uh, and of course, uh, with uh, a lot of coordination with the United States as well. Yeah, well, here's a daring question for you, Colonel. I'll see how far you go with this one. Uh, I want your expert opinion on the dilemma that the U.S. Air Force faces in the Pacific. Uh, responsibility for air base defense in the United States was given to the U.S. Army under the Key West Agreement a ways back. And it's hard to understand, but the Army has not 
actioned on that responsibility for air-based defense for decades, uh, during which the Chinese recognized that uh, they actioned uh, uh, to develop capabilities to overwhelm our air bases with land and air launched missile attacks. Have you considered uh, this U.S. defense issue? It must be fascinating to you, of course. And if the Air Force hypothetically was to request responsibility for its own air and missile defense for its bases out there, what would be your strategy? What might you offer uh, for defending those air bases? Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, we have the solutions of, of point defense or, or, or what we call city defense, and it is Iron Dome. Iron Dome is very cap capable uh, when talking about uh, defense of a city, a defense of a base, a defense of asset. Uh, so Iron, Iron Dome can be offered uh, to what, whatever is needed. And again, uh, you mentioned that the Army and the Marine Corps are looking at the Iron Dome uh, capability. And uh, we have not been approached by the US Air Force, but, uh, but of course it could be also an option. Well, we just may uh, be an intermediary for that, Colonel, if you're willing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I've got to get to a very important uh, and interesting point is uh, you, you referred to the uh, industry alliance uh, that we have. And uh, where do you see that going? Uh, uh, does that, it can, first, please explain why it is important to you, to Israel, but uh, where do you see that going? Uh, I can tell you that uh, as we speak, there are a lot of initiatives that are coming back and forth between our industries and the U.S. industries, the main uh, main uh, uh, companies in the United States, uh, with the, the, the right uh, government umbrella, we can look at directed, directed energy kind of cooperation, uh, cooperation against uh, you know maneuvering threats and uh, modern threats. I think that uh, both nations can share a lot of information and of course the companies with the support of the government can support uh, into, towards the new technologies. Uh, we are being asked by the Congress as well, how can we extend the technological uh, partnership? And uh, I can tell you that, uh, that uh, the, there are, uh, uh, there are uh, good planning for that in the future. Yeah, very good. Well, we've come to the end of this segment, Colonel Patel, and thank you again for taking time to share your insights with us today. On behalf of Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies, we wish you the very best in this era of ever-increasing challenges. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. As a reminder to our listeners, next week is the Air Force Association's Virtual Aerospace and Cyber Conference uh, from the 14th to the 16th of September. Mitchell Institute will have three on-demand panels, so please check us out at afa.org. Now, the following week, we'll host two live events online. On September 21st, it'll be a nuclear defense forum with Dr. Brad Roberts, director of the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory Center for Global Security Research. Dr. Roberts was also, by the way, a former DASD uh, in, uh, of nuclear and missile defense policy. And the very next day on September 22nd, uh, we'll have a space power forum uh, with NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine and uh, General Jay Raymond will be there, U.S. Space Force Chief of Space Force Operations. Okay, we're now going to open the session to questions from the audience who've been listening. Uh, as a reminder, audience, uh, you can participate by uh, using your raise hand function. When I call on you, please unmute your mic and state your name and affiliation for our guest. Uh, you can also submit a question in writing, in which case I will read the question. And uh, Colonel Patel, we do have a, a write-in question, uh, wanting to know, first of all, welcoming you, but what's the significance of the Iranian satellite launch earlier this year, in your view? Uh, 
you know, the satellite uh, planning uh, is, is something that is being planned uh, along the years. Uh, and of course, it's part of uh, the capability of Israel uh, with uh, a lot of capabilities. And of course, I cannot uh, elaborate more than what was, was published. Yes, okay. <laughs> well, let me, let, let's try another one uh, that was written in here. We saw the Lahav or light blade laser system deployed to the border along Gaza recently to destroy incendiary balloons being launched by terrorists. Can you talk uh, more about directed energy as a means to intercept rockets, mortars, and other munitions? And is IMDO working on these systems and is there room for collaboration with the United States? Uh, it's a very good question. What I can tell you is that uh, uh, our organization, the DDR&D, is working in, in the way that we are managing prog programs that are, you know, are more uh, uh, ready uh, for uh, full-scale development. And we have the R&D part of our uh, organization that actually look at new technologies. Uh, what I can tell you that uh, the R&D organization are in very advanced stages of uh, directed energy capabilities. Uh, they start to demonstrate some of these capabilities and, uh, you know, I, can, I cannot see a situation that, you know, in some years from now, it won't be part of our uh, missile defense array. Uh, with regards to partnership, uh, I think that there is a room for partnership. And uh, I can tell you that uh, there is a dialogue, a dialogue that is being, uh, is being blessed both by DOD and Congress. So uh, we, we, there are uh, discussions and there are uh, meetings and uh, hopefully we can have whatever we had in the past with the, when we started the, the weapon system. Okay, Vago Meridian, friend of Mitchell Institute. You all are friends, by the way. Uh, go ahead. And Vago, can you? Sorry about that, you? Stutz. That's okay. Uh, sorry, That's about okay. That. sorry about that, Stutz. Uh, sir, uh, always, uh, always a pleasure. Terrific event and great series, and looking forward to uh, a terrific uh, virtual AFA uh, next week. Uh, sir, you know, as you look at uh, precision strike weapon programs around the world, whether they're Russia or Chinese, uh, Iranian or North Korean, where do you project the threat being as you look forward, right? I mean, one of the great things uh, that Israel has been able to do is escape to where the puck is going to be as you look downstream. As you look at all of these trends, where do you see the threat from a global perspective uh, going as you look 10, 15 years out, 20 years out? Of course, I think that uh, we need to look at this threat uh... What, what, in the different words, is being called a hypersonic threat. Uh, it, it's something that uh, we, we need to plan and prepare our, ourselves as, um, you know, the, the major nations are looking at. Again, we are now talking only uh, in a R&D stage, uh, but uh, I think that uh, we, uh, we have the technologies and the capability uh, to have solutions for those kind of threats. Very good. We've got a writing question from Chris Olson. Uh, the U.S. Army's Integrated Air and Missile Defense Battle Command Systems, IBCS, boasts an open systems architecture to increase interoperability with joint and partner air and missile defense systems, command and control systems, and sensors. Does Israel have any plans to make their systems interoperable with IBCS such as sharing sensor data or battle space awareness? Of course. What I can tell you is uh, that uh, all of our systems, starting from Aero, going down to Iron Dome, have full interoperability capability, and we demonstrate this capability in Alaska flight testing. Uh, specifically talking about Iron Dome, uh, we know the requirements from the U.S. Army and we are going to implement full interoperability capability in our Iron Dome system according to uh, U.S. Army requirements. Very good. Uh, Brian McCullough from uh, Lockheed Martin asks, uh, interesting question, with peace within reach in the Gulf and perhaps less risk, do you lose some rationale 
for so many programs and capabilities? And secondly, where do Israeli missile defense foreign military sales go next? Can you project some future markets without getting in trouble? <laughs> First of all, we need all the time to be ready. You know, uh, uh, of course, there are some uh, activities towards peace, but of course, our enemies are still there, and we, we need to be ready and capable, again, uh, you know, uh, to be ready against our enemies. Uh, with regards to foreign military sales, what I can mention is uh, that uh, so far, uh, there are, as I mentioned, some, some uh, initiatives from different countries. Uh, everything is being investigated, analyzed, and, and being, need to be approved by both, both nations, uh, but I cannot uh, elaborate more than that. Understand. Uh, Colonel, we've got a question from the uh, defense attache for Italy in town here. Do you forecast any possibility for a joint missile defense architecture to protect some like-minded countries in the Eastern Mediterranean? Uh, first of all, this is something that, that techni technically can be done and with, that have a lot of advantages. Uh, but of course, we need to work all the other aspects uh, and all the other umbrellas in order to make it happen. Uh, there were some initiatives like that in the in the in the past, uh, but of course we need in that contest uh, the umbrella of uh, U.S. government uh, and maybe NATO uh, in order uh, in order to uh, have th those capabilities. Yeah, definitely important for the future. There'll be lots of discussions, and fortunately, you're. You're the man to uh, help inform that. Uh, one last question here, I believe, maybe uh, two last questions. Uh, Anonymous uh, says, you briefly mentioned Sea Dome, which entered IOC in 2017. Can you give us an update on Sea Dome status, how it integrates with the overall Iron Dome system, and why a naval missile defense capability is an important addition to the overall missile defense strategy? Um, it's a very good question. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I mentioned that uh, the Iron Dome is a more a point defense uh, system. Uh, Israel has assets uh, in the sea that can, need to be protected. And of course, our vessels uh, can do this protection. More than that, uh, our uh, vessels can work close to the shore and help uh, to protect from different angles from different uh, detection uh, capability uh, to protect uh, threats that are coming uh, to the land. So this is another capability. I can tell you that uh, both of our SAR-5 and SAR-6 will have the, uh, the CEDOM or the Iron Dome uh, uh, capability. Uh, and uh, they are fully connected. And actually when we demonstrate our last flight test with, uh, with uh, this vessel, we do full engage or remote capability. So in one hand, we have the capability to intercept according to uh, detections that are coming from the land. We have the capability to uh, have uh, interception as on own detection. Uh, so all the, the orchestra could work together. Well, thank you, Colonel Patel. We've come to the end of our hour. Uh, in this installment of the Missile Defense Forum. Uh, Colonel Patel, both our nations are fortunate to have you where you're at. Uh, your insights are invaluable and it's been a pleasure. I hope we uh, have you on again in the future and in particular hope to work with you sometime soon. Thank you very uh, so much, General. You it's bet. And, and, and please, thank your team. They were tremendous for their support today. Pass that on, please. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So to all of you from all of us at Mitchell Institute, thanks for joining us, at, us today and have a great aerospace powered day. Thank you.